Through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance, I believe that you are my fortress. Oh, you are my portion. You are my hiding place. Oh, I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. promise to every breath I take I believe that you are provider you are protector you are the one I love I believe you are the way the truth the life It's a new horizon, and I'm set on you, and you meet me here today, with mercies that are new, all my fears and doubts, they can all come to, because they can't stay long, when I'm here with you, it's a new horizon, and I'm set on you, and you meet me with mercies that are new, all my fears and doubts, they can all come too. Because they can't stay long when I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are the way, the truth. The life I believe you new horizon I'm set on you and you meet me here today with mercies that are new all my fears and doubts they can all come to because they can't stay long when I believe you are the way the truth Good morning. Happy Pentecost to everyone. Uh, welcome to church on, on this Sunday morning, this Pentecost Sunday. We call it the birthday of the church, and we'll learn a little bit more about that in the children's sermon today. Um, today, as we, as we gather um, and, and listen for the word of God in, in music and, and in text and in word, Think about how the Holy Spirit works in your life. We're going we're gonna to reflect today a little bit about, even in this past year, how the Spirit was alive here at Glory Day and indeed in the entire church. So with that, please rise as you're able, as we worship our God together. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, 
from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth. Like rains to the thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us in your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost came, the apostles were together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared upon them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, 
because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. A reading from Romans. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit. Because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks. Thanks. Please rise for the gospel. according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You are also to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Not yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go away, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, 
about righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into the, all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare to you. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I invite the kids to come on up. Good morning. A little group this morning, but I'm glad you're all here because we are going to um, look in my bag and see what we might have in here. Hmm. I have that. I have these. What are those? Balloons, right? Let's see what else we might have in here. Ah. And what's that? A present. What, what do you think we are celebrating today? A birthday. Do you know whose birthday it might be? Hmm, somebody here might have a birthday, but we're not celebrating their birthday today. We are celebrating the birthday of the church. Today we call this day Pentecost. Did you notice everything's red now? All the colors have changed from last week. They were white and now they're red. Today is the day of Pentecost and the church's birthday. And these things will help us understand a little better what happened on Pentecost. This is the day that, the, that God sent the Holy Spirit, the person who looks out for us to, to the people. And, on, and the Holy Spirit fills us with, with breath, the breath of life from God. Now, these are pretty flat, right? So do you think the Holy Spirit did its job here? No, those are pretty, pretty. But God, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit has, fills us with the breath of life. So what do you think a balloon should like, look like if the Spirit came? Maybe more like that. Let's see if I can hit, not hit the candles here. So this is what it's like when the Holy Spirit fills a balloon full of, of air and, and breath and life was blown into them. So we'll look at those in just a minute. And what about these? Candles, birthday candles. Every cake needs a birthday candle, right? Well, most birthday cakes need one. So on the day of Pentecost, we... we we hear about how flames came on the people's head. But don't worry, they weren't hot flames. These were the, these were the, the fire that they put into the people that... Uh, I lost them because Luke grabbed a balloon. <laughs> so this represents the flames. And then there's, what's this, present? Right, the Holy Spirit gives us a present, the present of life and and. Jesus says that he would be an advocate, somebody who would be with us all the time. So that's a big present from the Holy Spirit. So we have air, the breath of life. We have fire, and we have a present. And that's what Pentecost is all about. Our birthday, the church's birthday, when we began this church. Awesome, right? And to church on this Pentecost Sunday as we celebrate the birthday of the church, the coming of the Holy Spirit, which God had, had said would come from long, long before. But the Spirit has been with us forever, right? It is the same Spirit that we celebrate today that was with us when the earth was formed. In the, be in the beginning, before God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. Then the breath of God, the spirit, the wind of God blew across the face of the waters, fluttering her, 
her wings and creating a disturbance. Many years later, the same spirit of God fluttered her wings once again, creating a a disturbance. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a roaring mighty windstorm. And it filled that room where the disciples were. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. Their tongues were unloosed and they began to preach the good news of Jesus in creative ways, speaking in languages that they did not know. The breath of God gave them this ability. As the Holy Spirit continued to blow in that place, it moved Peter to exclaim, in the last days I will pour out my spirit of God on all people. Your sons and daughters shall catch a glimpse of God's plans for the futures. Your young men and women shall see visions. Your old men and old women shall dream dreams. That breath, that breath of God that stirred up the waters of creation, the breath of God, that, the spirit that filled those disciples with visions and dreams is blowing among us today. Can you feel it? Can you feel the spirit here? There is always a spirit around us. The spirit of God is always with us, but often, often it's not like as is described. Often the spirit of God is more small, more gentle, a smaller voice. But as both Genesis 1 and Acts testifies, God's spirit is a creative spirit that shakes things up a bit, who creates a disturbance every once in a while in our lives. The spirit who moves in us and around us, surprising us in unpredictable ways. The spirit that that came inside me to tell you that even though the Bible says he is a spirit, the, the Greek says that the spirit is actually female. It is a female noun. The spirit who, who rested on the disciples that day of Pentecost, that's when things started to happen. And if we allow this breath of God to blow freely in our lives, in and among us, things will start to happen here as well. Friends in Christ, the spirit is alive And it is blowing through this congregation and indeed through the entire church. Today is the day of Pentecost. It is, as I told the children, a time that we celebrate the birthday of the church. As I was getting ready on this, I hate to say it, historic day. It's been so long since since we've had chairs up here and we come together. Some of us don't have masks on. I was thinking as I was setting up the sanctuary, how different last Pentecost was. I I told some people I walked out and it was like a foreign place again because of how it looks again. How different Pentecost was last year. It didn't seem like the Spirit of God even was sending a whisper through this church last year. It seemed very um, subdued and certainly a bit muted. Now, there were a few of us here, but I wonder if perhaps some of us thought, is God even at work among us in the same way? This is Pentecost of last year, and it doesn't seem like a celebration. But I must tell you, even in the deepest, darkest part of the pandemic, The power of the Holy Spirit was evident in this church and in this congregation, moving moving in us and around us in in surprising and unpredictable ways. And today, we as a congregation have much, much to celebrate. Today we come together, the biggest thing we celebrate is that over 2,000 years we have been celebrating Jesus that who is still building his church, even through social distancing, even through the pandemic, Jesus was still in charge in building his church. 
And the last year, the spirit moved within us uh, right, through, through the, the governing board, through, through the leaders, and through you. And things started to happen. In the last year, the spirit moved this church so drastically at times it felt like a great windstorm was coming. It, we also had time and space to be creative, to take inventory, to evaluate, to imagine, and even dream dreams. We have come through this time, some of us a, a bit blemished, but all in all, we are healthy and we are whole. During the difficult pandemic, the Spirit continued to, to gather its people to its church. As I heard reports of, of other congregations, Gloria Day, the Spirit was moving within us. Gloria Day welcomed 16 new members during the pandemic. We figured out how to have a virtual reality very quickly after it hit. And now we have expanded. The spirit is alive, giving us new technology. Soon we will be broadcasting a live stream where we, like Peter, can, can proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, not only in this building, but to the world. To the world. And although change and distancing were not easy, the spirit remained in us as we continued to be the body of Christ we prayed for God's wisdom, we prayed for courage and strength and continued our ministry of social justice and reaching out to the least of them. And as we slowly, slowly come out of the, this time, the creation blows, or the spirit blows again. It blows through this church. We continue to come together as the body of Christ to worship Today, we get to once again see some smiling faces, something we haven't seen in over a year. I forgot what some of you look like. Our children can once again come up and join me to hear the word of God in their language during the children's sermons. And we are once again able to sing wonderful hymns that speak of the saving power of Jesus and speak of the, the power of the Holy Spirit. Today is certainly a different celebration than last Pentecost. In the presence and the power, the Holy Spirit working within us is not finished with us. It is not done. Just like on that first day of Pentecost, just at when creation was being made, the Spirit is alive and here and it is in every new generation. So today we say, come Holy Spirit, make this meal of bread and wine more than just a remembrance of the crucified Jesus, but make it a celebration of the living Christ who is still here among us. We say, come Holy Spirit, j just as the first uh, people did at the first Pentecost, when, when foreigners of different languages came together and they, they understood each other, they became one of people. Come, Holy Spirit, as we too gather our church, the whole church of people from different lands, of different social standing, of different colors and of different races. Come, Holy Spirit, that your young men and young women can catch a glimpse of the future. Catch a glimpse of where this church is going, Gloria Day, and catch a glimpse of where the entire whole church is going. It's an exciting time to be the church right now. Come, Holy Spirit, that old men and old women still can still dream dreams of what the future holds and what will be. You see, God's Spirit, our advocate, was there at the beginning and has never ceased, has never ceased God's work of enlivening and inspiring each and one of us. So let us celebrate birthday, the birthday of the church today, but also let us discern where God is working 
and moving today and in the future, both inside and outside of the church, giving life, sharing what is new, renewing what is old, and restoring what is outworn. So on this Pentecost Sunday, I'm not sending you out with any great tasks to do. I'm just asking you to allow the Spirit of God to blow in your life and allow the Spirit of God to enter the doors of this church so that we can be filled with wonderful and imaginative things, that we can dream dreams, that we can see the future, and I ask you to never stop praying the ancient prayer of the church. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Happy birthday, church. Amen. Oh, uh -huh.
Please rise as you are able. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many and varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and dreaming that it may discover anew the Spirit's creative work. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of life, your mighty works are too numerous to count. The earth is full of your creatures, living things both great and small. Open your hand and give them the necessities of this life. Send your fresh spirit over the face of the earth. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even the size of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore to wholeness all who are in need this day. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of love, fill the congregation of Gloria Day with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Renew our ministries, heal our divisions, and open us to the needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. God of healing and life, we lift to you in prayer, Cassandra, Tim, Ray, Tony, Lori, Linda, Nancy, Mark, Corey, Jay, Betty, Marianne, Laura, the Snell family, the Voigt family, and the Wrinkle family. O oh God, be with our brothers and sisters and our sons and daughters who serve in military and humanitarian efforts. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. Please share a sign of that peace as you are comfortable. <laughs> rise as you are able. Let us pray together. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives in the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out your fire of the Spirit, uniting in one body the people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
holy, mighty, and merciful Lord. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you are able. <clears throat> Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.